Hi, my name is Stu, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add some basic tracing to your .NET libraries. If you're new here, this channel is all about me breaking down different technologies into easily digestible chunks. In this video, I'm going to take you through how, as a library author, you can add some basic distributed tracing logic to your package. So to go through the application that we're going to be using today, we have a hosted service called app, which has a dependency on a service which is defined in our library project. And all the background service does is call this service A five times, and service A has a random little delay on it so that we can see stuff in action. And when we add distributed tracing logic, this will be captured by our open telemetry uh, integration, which we have in the application project. So just to confirm, the app class doesn't really do anything special. It just calls the service five times and the service is injected in through the constructor. And the service just waits between 500 milliseconds and two seconds and then writes up something to the console. The library project has no dependencies other than the target framework .NET 5. And the application project only has uh, dependencies on Microsoft .hosting, which is our host builder and runner. Then we've got the OpenTelemetry integration for that and the OpenTelemetry console exporter as well. The library project that we've referenced here could either be used as a project reference or equally you could package this up and distribute it as a new Git package. The approach works in the exact same way. As a library author, there are multiple ways that you could add some basic distributed tracing logic to your libraries that you distribute. One of the ways that you could do this is to add the OpenTelemetry project or a similar project inside of your package and create the dependency between them. Personally, I don't like this kind of coupling between packages as you're very subjected to the API changes that projects like OpenTelemetry are currently going through. The approach that I'm going to show you is by using the new activity source, which is available natively in .NET 5 and via a new Git package in .NET Core App 3.1. So now let's take a look at creating our first activity source. For brevity, I'm just going to do this all in the same file, but naturally we would split this out in our real life applications. I'm going to create a new class called my activity source. The first thing I'm going to do is create a static string called name. And this is what our activity source is going to be named. And for simplicity, I'm just going to call it name of my activity source. Just so that we have something there that we can uh, reference both here and in the open telemetry portion, which I'll show you later on. Next, we need to create a property for the activity source. I personally like to do this as a singleton um, type pattern, but you could in theory just do it in any way that you wanted to. To do this, I'm going to go public static activity source. I'm going to call it instance. And it's going to be a new activity source. And we need to pass in the name of the activity source here as well. If you wanted to version your activity sources with the version of your library, you could also do that by adding in a version here, such as 1.0.0. But for this demo, we don't need it, so I'm not going to add it in. From here, the next bit that we need to do is actually go into our method, start calling the instance of the activity source to start events. So I'm going to go into the do something async method, and I'm going to type using var activity equals my activity source dot instance dot start activity. And this takes a couple of parameters. The one that we're interested in for now is the name parameter. And this represents the name of the operation that you're performing. So this could be my API call, for example. Depending on whether or not anybody is actually listening to the activity source that you created depends on whether you actually get an activity instance back from the start activity method. For example, if nobody decided to listen to your activity source, then you would get a null coming back from the start activity method. This is extremely important to know because once you do have an activity returned from this API call, 
Then you can add things like tags, which may be the status code of a web request through to events that happen inside of your library. And these all require an instance of an activity code to work. So to guard against this, let's say we're going to add a new tag to our activity saying that the re result was successful. We would say activity dot add tag, give it a name, uh, success. And we're just going to pass in the value true. Now this would work if the activity came back with something, but if it's going to be a null, then this method would blow up. So we just need to guard it with a null coalescing operator. And just to be a little bit more explicit about stopping the activity, I'm just going to go after the delay and call activity dot stop in the same manner as if I was going to add tag. So now that we've gone through and instrumented our library, Let's check out what happens when we run our application with OpenTelemetry, but we're not actually listening for our new activity source. As you can see, the application ran to completion completely fine, and we've got zero error handling in here. So now let's make OpenTelemetry aware of our activity source so that it can start displaying the activity. To do this, I'm going to go over to the program.cs where I register open telemetry and I'm going to add the source using the dot add source method. And I'm going to pass in my activity source dot name. If I hit F5 again now, you'll see that our tracing has started to work. If you want to target anything less than .NET 5, then you're going to need to add the NuGet package system.diagnostics.diagnosticSource. This provides the activity source type, which you'll need for earlier versions of the .NET framework. My recommendation for building activity sources is that you keep one activity source per library project that you create. So for example, if I had two library projects in this one, I would create one for each. This allows me just to switch on and off different sections of the instrumentation as I see fit. I would also probably have this add source implementation hidden inside of an extension method. So I could just say dot add my libraries instrumentation. So that's pretty much it. It's actually really, really easy and simple to get through some distributed tracing uh, in your applications. If you like the video, please hit the like button below and hit subscribe to be notified for when new videos are available. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.